This is episode 17 of the History of Podcast. I'm Robert. And I'm Emma. And today we will be talking about the history of Coca-Cola. Now, before we dive in, like always, uh, don't forget to look at our YouTube channel. It's also called The History Of. Link is in the show notes. And don't forget to check out our lovely Instagram. It's called The History Of Podcast. And check it out. Yeah. And uh, today's egg carton count is... It's 23. And uh, I will say, um, you know, before we get into Coca-Cola... Mm-hmm. Well, okay. Well, okay. Some parts of the history of Coca-Cola are common knowledge, um, but this episode contains a lot of surprises. Coca-Cola has been inc- incredibly influential, as we'll discuss later, and uh, it's it's synonymous with all things America. Uh, the story starts on April sixteenth, eighteen sixty-five, at the Battle of Columbus in Georgia, and uh, a guy named John Pemberton, very important character, he he was stabbed in the chest at that in that battle. And uh, it was it was a miracle that he survived. Mm-hmm. And uh, but he became dependent on morphine because that was the only that was the drug that was powerful enough to ease his pain. Uh, so he, he became dependent on morphine and he became addicted to morphine for the rest of his life. And uh, he even started his own pharmacy in Atlanta, Georgia, just so he could have a steady of supply of morphine. Pemberton had to find a substitute for his drug addiction, so he looked at coca wine. Coca wine was a concoction of wine and cocaine from France, said to be a, quote, great brain and nerve tonic. There was, there was hardly any science or, like, known information about drugs back then. It was just, like, see how many intoxicants you can put in, you can mix together, and then see if it works that's yeah it it was pretty bad it's pretty sketchy this coca wine was the inspiration for coca-cola pepperton's first products were kind of a copycat of coca wine the basic ingredients were alcohol cocaine and caffeine now i could i bet that could get you real riled up (laughs) real quick he sold his formula as a concentrated syrup that could be shipped to pharmacies where it was mixed with carbonated water and served to customers and uh, in case you didn't know, Coke is still made that way today. That's why that's why Coca-Cola freestyle machines can hold so much. Mm-hmm. It's just bags of concentrate syrup with that's that's mixed with carbonated water just whenever you order it. So that's something I learned this episode. Anyway, this early Coke was an actual medicine. Probably didn't have a prescription though. And uh, I'm questioning. I don't know if this is the beginning of the pharmacy soda fountain kind of the the whole trend of pharmacy soda fountains like you go get ice cream you get soda but i think this might be it um i I think this might be it of when like the drugstore you know the drugstore being synonymous with soda fountains Mm -hmm. i think this might have been the beginning of that yeah i wouldn't be surprised but i don't think we have 100 percent evidence yeah yeah you know those old signs that say coca-cola just five cents well that was the original price, and it stayed that price until 1959. And uh, the name the name Coca-Cola comes from two important ingredients, cocaine and caffeine. Oh, my. And uh, coca comes from the coca leaf, which was the source of cocaine. The, the original formula only contained nine milligrams. Only nine milligrams of cocaine. Which, it's a milligram. So it's not, it's not as much as, like, would be a drug addict's dose today. But it would, it would kick you up. How do you know that, Robert? The, this is what the sources said, Emma. Okay. And uh, the, the cola comes from the cola nut, uh, which is the source of caffeine, um, cola nut. And technically, a, a soda with cola in its name, uh, when you look at this, when you look at the word root, means that it should mean that it's caffeinated. So mm. if you see, like, something cola should mean that it's caffeinated. Interesting. Also, Coke still contains non-narcotic coca extract. They partnered with the Stepping Company, which is the only entity licensed to legally import coca leaves into America. The official recipe is in a vault at World of Coca-Cola. And uh, in 1886, alcohol became outlawed. So uh, Pemberton, the creator of Coca-Cola, just uh, he changed his formula, making it non-alcoholic. And uh, you know those iconic, the the iconic flowing white letters oh, yes, of Coca-Cola? 
were said to be designed by his bookkeeper, uh, Frank Mason Robinson, but some say it was created by Pemberton's assistant, Asa Candler himself. And uh, Robinson did come up, he, came, he did come up with the name, though, the, uh, combining uh, the, the coca leaf and the cola nut, Coca-Cola. Mm-hmm. Um, but as far as the, the white letters, both, when you look at it closely, both Budweiser and Ford have imitated, have imitated this, this flowing letter style. Interesting. Yeah. Pemberton, the original creator, died in 1888 from a morphine overdose. The question after this was, who was going to inherit the company? It was between uh, Asa Candler and uh, Pemberton's son, Charlie. And uh, Candler did it the American way and kind of bought everything out. He, he won the money game and eventually got the company. And uh, let's talk a little more about this Candler character because he's, he's pretty important. He, as well as another business leader who we'll talk about later, was instrumental in the early branding, uh, advertising, and success of the company. He did, he did a lot that set the tone for the future of Coca-Cola. Starting in 1886, Candler handed out tickets for one free glass of Coca-Cola, redeemable at any soda fountain. This was revolutionary. He also had syrup factories built in Philadelphia, Dallas, and Los Angeles, really taking the company worldwide. So he, he made the first coupons, the first known coupons, because it was, it was a slip of paper that you could turn in to a, uh, a soda fountain coupon which you i don't know if yeah it's a coupon right it's a coupon because it was a coupon for a free sample ah free samples I yeah it samples. Was, it's the first coupon for a free sample um and then you know like coca-cola invented so many original things it's it's incredible and uh candler asa candler this um the first i guess first ceo maybe um because he incorporated the company in 1892 and uh, in 1893, the name Coca-Cola was finally trademarked. And uh, under his authority, uh, under Candler's authority, Coca-Cola also had its first informal export- exportation into Canada. And uh, this was the first first blip of Coke around the world. Coke wasn't bottled until 1891. Even then, the agreement wasn't formal. The first formal agreement for bottling was with a plant built in Chattanooga, Tennessee. And uh, one smart feature is that Coca-Cola kept itself and still keeps itself independent from bottling companies, which significantly reduces liabilities, as we will talk about at the end of the episode. However, um, that that Chattanooga plant um, that purchased the rights uh, to bottle Coca-Cola, they only purchased those rights... For one dollar. One dollar. Yeah. One dollar. I guess nobody thought that bo- bottling would go anywhere. There were some legal issues for around this for a long time, so, you know, about 20 years. In 1898, the U.S. government started taxing medicines. So Coca-Cola shifted from selling itself as a drug remedy to a refreshing soda. And uh, Coca-Cola, cocaine was ex- excluded from the formula in 1903. Good. So that's really what... <laughs> Um, kind of shifted it fr- more from a medicine to a soda. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know that, that classic contoured glass? Uh, yes. Beautiful. Um, the Coca-Cola bottle, that was created in 1916. Um, but for some reason it wasn't even trademarked till 1960. Which was, interestingly, the same year that Coke started using aluminum cans. Huh. Yeah. In 1919, the company went under the leadership of Ernest Woodruff. Soon after, his son, Robert Woodruff, took over and was the president of the company for 32 years. And uh, the Woodruff family changed the branding and advertising games, like, for real. These guys revolutionized the game. Um, He, Ernest, uh, Ernest Woodruff, had had the vision to make Coca-Cola available everywhere in the world, and uh, he just about did it. Take One thing I will say is take notice... Of every time you see the Coca-Cola logo, and it's scary once you start counting. And e- include all the companies that Coca-Cola owns. Ooh. Yeah, it's scary. Like, I'm pretty sure, don't quote me on this, I don't know what it is right now, but I think Coca-Cola is the third most valuable company That's up in there. the world. Yeah. 
And uh, so Asa Candler, um, the first CEO, I guess you could say, really started this uh, this big advertising game. But Woodruff, he really blew it up. Mm-hmm. He invented the six-pack so customers would buy more. He also started doing some of the major exporting. It took some encouragement to get Europeans to drink Coke, so the early international bottles looked like little champagne bottles. Yeah, they were like they were green with kind of a gold foil top. It was very fancy. Yeah, those go for a lot. Yeah, those yeah, go for a lot today. They do. And uh, here's something that'll surprise you: Coca-Cola created Santa Claus as we know it. Uh, so they created the six pack and they okay and they created santa claus but they, they didn't actually create santa claus you know old uh saint nicholas did very much exist before yes father christmas however coca-cola was the first to brand him as the jolly fat man with the white beard and the warm red suit uh with with white trim Coca-Cola sponsored Team USA in 1928 in the 1928 Amsterdam Olympics and uh, they've been they've been sponsored ever since the Olympics have. Just before World War II, Coca-Cola syrup was banned from being shipped to Germany. To get around this, Coca-Cola bought Fanta, a German soda company. This is not to mention the acquisition or creation of Minute Maid, Danassi, Fresca, Sprite, Dasani, or- Dasani, Danassi, Dasani. Wow, Dasani, Fresca, Sprite, Barks, Root Beer, and Powerade over the years. No it, country can escape the influence of Coke. This is true. And, uh, but we, we're like throwing facts back and forth. But, um, I mean, I guess that's kind of just how this episode's going to go. Because it's, it's just going to be like a bunch of fun facts about Coke. But just think about this. All the, the drinks, like all those drinks you mentioned that you see in the Coca-Cola free style machine, those are all owned by Coke. I mean, that would make sense. Yeah. But like... There's a lot of stuff in the Coca-Cola freestyle machines. Because, like, then there's the, the Coke. There's, like, Sprite. Then there's, like, Sprite Cherry. And there's, like... I'm pretty sure when you count them all up in all the countries, it's, like, 2,800 drinks Dang. that Coca-Cola owns. And, uh, by the way, those uh, Coca-Cola freestyle machines were designed by designers from Ferrari. So, mm, yeah. Interesting. Wow. And, uh... So you said no country can escape the influence of Coke. Interesting. You said Coke, not Coca-Cola. And that nickname, Coke, was actually uh, first promoted by the company in 1941. And uh, it was trademarked in 1945. In World War II, Woodruff made a point to have Coke available to U.S. soldiers wherever they went. This might explain how Coca-Cola has become synonymous with America and America overseas. Coke can be found everywhere around the world except for Cuba and North Korea, even in Antarctica. So I guess like, there's e- Coke in Antarctica. Even, even then, it's still ex- it's still smuggled into Cuba and ah. North Korea. So, like, no country can escape the influence of Coke. Well, goodness. And uh, the first diet version of Coke was not Diet Coke. Really? It was actually called Tab. Tab. And uh, it was released in 1963. And uh, Diet Coke was not created until 1982. In 1995, New Coke came out with a so-called improved formula. It won several blind taste tests against the original formula and Pepsi. But the the public wasn't happy with New Coke. That's what it was called, New Coke. So Classic Coke was re-released three months later. So I guess they took Classic Coke off the market temporarily. That didn't make people very happy. Um... And I will say, Pepsi actually beats classic Coke in blind taste tests, even though open taste tests show otherwise. That's just how powerful the brand is. Like, Pepsi wins the taste tests, but Coke wins the branding. And uh, the formula for new Coke is the same as that of Diet Coke, uh, except with uh, high fructose corn syrup instead of aspartame. So, if you, like, new Coke went away, Um, it, it was actually changed to Coke 2. Um, uh, it was, yeah, it was changed Coke too. Uh, it went away in 2002, but, um, yeah, if you want to know what that tastes like, just taste Diet Coke. Like, people don't like Diet Coke. People say, oh, it tastes terrible, but that's actually, like, what new Coke tastes like. And it's, it won a bunch of blind taste tests. 
Have you ever heard of clear coke? Well, that's a thing in Japan. Hmm. That's... Yeah. Wow. Why? That's I mean, so pointless. I mean, maybe it looks healthier. What is... they? I looked at, like... They just took out the caramel color. Like, that's... Well... It's like Sprite. Is Sprite any healthier than Coke? Well... There was the Share a Coke uh, ad campaign uh, for which a new font was even created. And uh, Coke was Coke was brought to space in 1985 on the on the Challenger. Wow. And I think they wanted to see if um, you could make soda or like if you could if you could carbonate water in space. And uh, the test was successful. They could. That's awesome. So now they have Coke in space. Y'all. My brother works in the building next to the Coca-Cola headquarters in Atlanta. And guess what? He gets unlimited Coke. I mean, Coca-Cola at his office. Also, my dad went on a mission trip to Honduras a few years ago, and the water there is undrinkable. You just, it's, you get sick if you drink it. It's just not pretty. Even if you have, like, ice in your drink, yeah, you like, get sick. Like, it's if just... you have the, if you have bottled water... Like, th- that's one thing they worry about in Honduras is if you have, say you pour bottled water into a glass and you pour it over ice, but the ice is from the water there, you can still get poisoned. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So everybody drinks Coke there. And sadly, much of the country is overweight, it's, I guess, because of that. It's really sad. And they like, they promote it. They're like, it makes the meal. But it's, it's, it's so it's sad. Not good for you. Um, Better than poison, I guess. <laughs> there's one last legal thing I want to throw in this episode. In 2001, the United Steel Workers of America and the International Labor Rights Fund filed a lawsuit on Coca-Cola and uh, two of its bottling partners. The accusation was that the companies hired uh, agents to kidnap, torture, and even murder some of the work uh, the workers' union leaders. That's awful. Yeah, it's yeah. Um, this this all took place in Central America, um, so that's why a lot of people haven't heard of it, but. Um, there, there were also some accusations of some pretty bad soil and water pollution by Coca-Cola. People forget about this stuff. Mm-hmm. They can make you... People can make you forget about stuff. Like, history can be essentially erased from the minds of the people. But, um, it's one that of the was, reasons we have this podcast. Yeah. That was a little before my time, that lawsuit. Um, but apparently there, were, there was some controversy over Coca-Cola in America for a little while. And uh, the human rights case was not dismissed until 2009. Um, and of course, so it started in 2001, wasn't di- dismissed till 2009. But of course, nearly everyone has kind of forgotten about that now, which is incredible. It's, it's amazing how that happens. Well, if you have any questions or comments about the information provided in this episode, please contact us at thehistoryof365 at gmail.com. Have a blessed day. And you've got to promise me something. Never stop learning.